In the primordial state of constancy, there is no material existence. There is simplicity, stillness, and emptiness. Simplicity is great simplicity. Stillness is great stillness. Emptiness is great emptiness. It fulfills itself without repressing itself. Then, space arises. Once there is space, there is chi, the great movement of all things. Once there is chi, there is material existence. Once there is material existence, there is a beginning. Once there is a beginning, there is the passage of time. There is not yet heaven and earth. There is not yet arising, progression, emergence, or the creation of cause and effect. Empty, still, and as though one. Muddled and murky like dark water. All is still and homogeneous. There is not yet light, and not yet the teeming of life. Chi is self-generating. Constancy, categorically, does not give rise to chi. Chi is self-generating and self-arising. The production of constant chi does not happen in isolation. There is something that takes part in the great process. Space and constancy are present. The same can be said of the process during which space is engendered. Dusky and full of worries, they seek which gives rise to them. Difference engenders difference. Returning engenders returning. Divergence engenders opposition. Opposition engenders divergence. And dependence engenders dependence. All things are in a state of seeking, desiring to reproduce of their own accord. Reproduction is the process of engendering life. The turbid and confused chi gives rise to earth. The clear and harmonious chi gives rise to heaven. The mystery of chi is truly a sign of great power. All things proliferate and give rise to each other, stretching to fill all of heaven and earth. All things emerge from the same source, but give rise to different things. Accordingly, they give rise to that which they desire. Splendid are heaven and earth, for they are motley, and make the great diversity of all things. Primordially, there is good, harmony, and no disorder. Once there are humans, there is not good, disharmony, and disorder. Disorder emerges from human beings. First there is the center, and only then there is the periphery. First there is the small, and only then there is the big. First there is the soft, and only then there is the hard. First there is the round, and only then there is the square. First is there the dark, and only then there is the light. First there is the short, and only then there is the long. Once the way of heaven is laid out, only through oneness do things appear. Only through reproduction do things appear as reproduced. Within its giving rise to all things, the constant chi relies on producing that which it desires. Brilliantly, heaven proceeds. Only by reproduction does one avoid extinction. When knowing is complete, one's far-ranging thoughts will not be destroyed. Material existence emerges from space. Life emerges from material existence. Sounds emerge from life. Speech emerges from sounds. Names emerge from speech. And endeavors emerge from names. If space were not space, then there would be no referring to space. If material existence was not material existence, there would then be no referring to material existence. If life were not life, then there would be no referring to life. If speech were not speech, then there would be no referring to speech. If sound were not sound, there would be no referring to sound. If speech were not speech, there would be no referring to speech. If names were not names, there would be no referring to names. If endeavors are not endeavors, there would be no referring to endeavors. Favorable adherence to heaven, beneficial craft, and the great panoply of diverse things emerge from the act of arising. When there is arising, there is endeavor. When there is no arising, then there is no endeavor. Regarding the endeavors of heaven, they will arise of themselves to become endeavors. How then could they not be continued? In general, when speaking of names, those who come first are to speak uncertainly and to speak wildly. Those who come later will collate and compare what they have said. Through this, there is understanding of names. Regarding the names of the world, they are established in the manner of emptiness. It is through the practice of names by men that they become inalterable and true. Regarding the arisings of the world, it is the forceful who get results. The great arisings of the world, in their dazzling glory, are not in accord with natural action. As for these arisings, how can there be achievement and non-achievement? Neither of the two can be dispensed with. Regarding the actions of the world, by neither avoiding nor partaking in them, we can be happy of ourselves. The same is true regarding life in the world. It endeavors to have nothing that does not reproduce. As for the arisings of the world, if they do not go against constancy, then there will be nothing that opposes its place. Regarding the arisings of the world, 
There are none that do not obtain constancy and have their results passed down. How is it that there are some who obtain it and those who lose it? Regarding the names of the world, there are none that can be dispensed with. Regarding the enlightened kings, enlightened rulers, and enlightened scholars of the world, how can one seek but not consider these truths? Thus ends the Hongxian.